Welcome to Crucible Boot Camp, episode 10. I'm your host, Keen Koala, and today we're going to be watching a skirmish match from a uh, pulse rifle sniper gunslinger on Shores of Time, which is a map we haven't covered yet, and luckily there was a new call-out map that just got added to the playbook. So there's some uh, cool stuff on it, some sight lines, some areas where there are choke points, so it should be good for figuring out how you should properly move around the map and kind of trap people and radar and all those other good things that we cover on the show. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So right away we see our hero, the Crazyator, head towards the 50-50, which is okay in, in a non-trials map. Kind of feel out where your opponents are. I really like that he only takes one shot there. Um, even if he had gotten a body shot, it still probably would have been dangerous for him to keep, continue to challenge, just because um, taking that particular 50-50 is difficult. They normally know where you're going to enter into dark, that tunnel. But you have no idea what elevation they're going to be on, whether they're going to get to the boats, or where they're going to be on the stairs, where his opponent was. So he takes that one shot and he dips. He goes to reposition. Um, this little hop here, it's minor. Um, it seems minor, but if the if his opponent had actually gone into B, that little hop would have had him killed. It would have been better just to hug this pillar. So being more aware of your, your cover, as opposed to completely destroying any opportunity you have to live, uh, is, is good to be mindful of. So as I said, he repositions, he sees him here, he takes one shot, two shots, gets a body shot, and... I've talked about grenades before as either priming or finishing a target. Um, it's really difficult to finish a moving target with incendiary grenade, especially if they're moving away from it. Incendiary grenade's much better at um, stopping pushes and basically priming someone as they push into you. Uh, it would have, and, and you've already bodied him, so really there's no reason for you to hop into the air like this. Just take out your your primary and finish him off. So he pushes out and he sees where his, uh, he saw where one of the enemies was around this boat. He sees his opponent or his uh, teammates out here uh, on the other side of the pillar. But the problem with pushing an orb outside like this is this is still a 50 50 and you haven't really secured your entrance. Um, the issue that a lot of people have while pushing is that you don't secure your push, you just kind of do it because it's the right thing to do uh, and not necessarily thinking about how to do it properly. So he doesn't secure it. He sees, and he immediately gets stoned because he didn't check his left side. So, whenever you do a push, you do always want to make sure it's going to be free or safe. And you can, you can do that by going into cover or playing it slow, maybe sliding forward and jumping back, reading your radar. Again, and he's going to do this the entire match. He's going to go right to the 50-50 and try to cover it. And I'll, I'll show later why this isn't necessarily a good thing. It's good from a standpoint where you kind of know where people are going to be at. But the problem with going to 50-50s constantly is that your opponents also know where you're, you are going to be. He gets kind of lucky that guy misses blank. But this is an example of, of uh, predictive movement in 50-50s. The reason you go there is because you know people are going to be around. If you're playing against a bunch of snipers like he is, you know that someone's going to be on that back B boat. So it's as long as he just continually repositions, then he, he's going to be okay. He shouldn't, after that one kill, he shouldn't be uh, staying on B. Uh, once you get a kill on a spot, just assume that the enemy is going to run back to where they were and try to challenge you again. It's in your best interest to relocate to get a different angle on the location that you think they're going to push back to. For so, you, for example, it's pretty. If it was human nature for him to go back to boat, he could push around into that hallway or by by that pillar or even all the way out in jungle, and stop him from even getting onto the boat in the first place without getting shot at first. So he's. We're going to see a challenge here in a second. And it kind of highlights why I hate pulse rifles, because he's going to fire a bunch of times and miss. Um, 
all you really need to do as a gunslinger in midair is throw a knife there. And then when you land, you can clean them up very easily with your primary. Um, one of my notes is that I didn't see a single throwing knife this entire match. And at that point, uh, you're better off just running a different subclass if you're not going to use like a true ranged melee, which is the strength of, of playing gunslinger alongside the super. Um, and if he did hit that throwing knife in this position where he wasn't he was basically guaranteed to miss two bursts trying to shoot in midair, especially without Icarus on your gun. Uh, you're going to have enough left in the chamber while you're on the ground to challenge the second guy. Even then, well, as he finishes the challenge, he has two bursts left in the chamber. You don't need to reload here. You can actually put one or two shots on this guy and then finish him off with your second knife. Luckily, his teammate's covering for him, which is good. His teammates are always relatively close to him. Um, in this position, where his orb is is pretty dangerous. As you're going to see, he's going to try to get it, but he gets domed. In that position, uh, you want to keep in mind that your orb is a reward. It's not the focus of the match. Um, even in trials, the orb isn't the reward, it's the focus. Or the, the, or the orb is a reward, it's not the focus. So what do I mean by that? I mean that the way you play the game has to be that you're rewarded for doing good things and then you get an extra 50 points with the orb. Not you get the orb and then you're rewarded with an overshield to try to challenge someone else. There are edge cases where that's a good thing and where it matters that you got an overshield. Normally that's in situations where there's no cover, you're caught out in the open and that's really your only option for challenging whoever's left or if you're getting shot at by multiple people. Um, but for the most part, uh, if you're in an unsafe spot, you don't need to necessarily wait uh, for, your, for a res for the extra 50 points because in that case, you instead lot or, uh, netted minus 100 points because you got domed and didn't pick up the res. Um, rewind this real quick. So, something that I don't think a lot of players actually realize is that you throw your grenade from your left hand, which means that you have to position your reticle in such a way that uh, any, anything on the left of where you throw it could potentially stop your grenade. Uh, and this happens a lot with things like uh, with lightning grenade. Since it always shoots from your left hand, it's more likely to hit this wall unless you aim away from it. I really liked the grenade placement there. It would have been really good if he did get it through, but that's just a little thing to keep in mind. So he ends up getting killed by the split spawn, uh, the guy he killed earlier with the snipe. Luckily, he, he makes the kill, but he's kind of in a... This entire engagement was kind of iffy after he lost his grenade, um, just because he's not really in any true cover. I am surprised that the guy spawned out in the cave as opposed to outside on jungle boat. But even then. And he should still be challenging with his sniper here. You don't need a primary challenge here yet. Just because it's a really d difficult angle for both players. So that was just a case of not quite having the right gun for the situation. If he had a primary that down, then he would have basically been guaranteed to, if he body shotted him, get one guy out of the fight. So again, he spawns, he goes to the, he goes right to B. This is okay for a very passive play style where you expect the enemy team to come into you. But for the most part, uh, a smart team will basically ignore you if you're going to try to control a zone and they'll move to flank you for the most part or just kill your teammates it's really difficult to play a person uh, play solo on threes as the kind of person who controls a zone because you don't know what your teammates are going to do you can't really communicate with them and if the enemy team just ignores you and kills your teammates you're constantly going to be in outnumbered situations So there, they ignored him, their teammates, his teammates were gone, and now he's being team-fired. 
He has a nice slide here to get out. But he's not really grouping up with his teammates. If you're not a good flanker, worst case scenario is you just follow someone around and you potentially get multi-grenaded. But it's better for you to follow someone around, die, and then the second guy finishes the guy off and picks you up than it is to kind of do nothing on the map by controlling a zone where people aren't uh, coming into you. Obviously, if the enemy team was constantly coming into you, to your sight lines, then your your positioning would be perfectly fine. Um, but that is more of a coordinated type style of play as opposed to a solo type of play. You need to be more assertive when you're by yourself. If he... So this is one of the issues with going to 50-50s. Off spawn. So if he just waits here around this pillar, he can have a clear shot on this guy if he goes on either side of this, this pillar up here to the left. If he pushes down onto the stairs, then he's completely open and you'll probably kill him. You can throw a grenade. Uh, you can go off here to the right down below this ledge. That gives you a nice little head glitch up into someone pushing through dark. But instead he pushes right out into the open and doesn't dip back into cover. He had a really good opportunity right at that first burst to dip back to the left behind this pillar, maybe throw a defensive grenade off the wall because your frag grenades or your incendiary grenades will bounce. So you can cover your escape. And if he pushes into the grenade, great, he's probably gonna die. If he doesn't, then you get time to reline up a, a shot, maybe pull out your sniper because you have uh, pretty much perfect information on where he's gonna attack you from. But instead he, he came out of his cover and challenged in the open. And in the true 50-50, they both died, so. So I talk a lot about pushing the pace, and when you get wipes like that, it, you basically have free reign to move wherever you want on the map. Um, it's okay to move back to your normal zone, but it would be better to actually push them off the spawn and try to move into them, be more assertive. Some really good team fire. A really stupid blade by their opponent. Okay, so let's talk about heavy because we don't talk about heavy very often. Uh, when you get heavy, you want to push into where you think the enemy team is going to move to, but not in such a way that they're going to predict where you are and just kill you right off the bat. Assume that everyone has rocket launchers. Um, you're almost always going to win heads up against a machine gun as long as you utilize cover. But instead, he's still controlling that zone. This is good. Like, you can basically patrol. Instead of staying on one spot, you can patrol to uh, cover more of the map. Where you are right now with your heavy, you can actually be sniping in, in Shrine Room. You can be sniping all the way out here by Waterfall. You can be sniping down uh, the Elbow Tunnel or down River. And you can just control the entire back half of the map moving back and forth based on where you think the enemy team is going to spawn. Or just based on people not moving where you are. That was a good rocket. His, his opponent just dodges out of the way. So. so now he's with his teammate. He's all the way on the other side of the map again. Good priming grenade. And this is something that I notice, and myself, I do this a lot too. Um, if someone's going to blink at you, your best option isn't backpedaling because really they're most likely going to drop either right on top of you or right behind you. Your best option is actually to slide through and force them to turn around. In this particular case, it would be really powerful to slide through because you're sliding into cover and they're exposed and you have a good escape route through dark. But instead he backpedals and this is what happens when you get blinked on when you, when you try to backpedal a blink. You just get shotgunned. Even with the nerf to blink and the ready and all that stuff, if you give your opponent enough time to ready and hit the, get their feet back on the ground, you're most likely going to die. Whereas if you slid through, then you could get a primary shot off, you could run. You see he has his goldie, he can even golden gun him if you really wanted to. Um, I normally check super times. Uh, 
he's held his super for two minutes. Goldie's on, if I want to say, 430 cooldown, tier 5 int. So not too bad. He, you didn't really see any good opportunities for him to use a super, but that's really because of the style of play he has. That's a really nice bait where he moves to the right instead of onto the head, normal head glitch to pull him out into the open. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but those are the kind of subtle plays you should be making as a sniper in order to get uh, lines on your opponent. Because sniping is 25% hitting the shot, 75% forcing them to make a mistake with positioning. I mean, you, if you wanted to, you could go for body shots an entire game and just clean them up with your primary. You don't have to hit a headshot. It's just more important that you don't waste your ammo. Some good snipes. You see his... We hear his uh, teammate finally hammer. I think that was the first time the whole match, too. Finally moves around to Challenge River and backs off. I think that's just an, a, a... You're probably just very uncomfortable with that sight line. It's probably why you don't go there. Um, this is little here. You see he gets a 170 and he gets the 85 or the full damage on the super. Um, this is a good opportunity for you to take your sniper out, which he does. But he unscoped. If you had stayed in scoped there, you would have killed him. And if you would have followed up with a melee, or even just stayed on the ground instead of jumping, you definitely would have killed that guy. So don't be afraid to challenge that. Even when they're really, really close like that. You gotta, you've gotta. you already committed to it by not really running. So if you're going to commit to the kill, then do your best to try to get it as opposed to try to avoid dying. Um, that's a paradigm shift in a, basically your mindset. It's the difference between playing to win and playing to not lose. If we're playing to not lose, then we would do the little hop that he did. Um, maybe we body shot them and try to run away, not necessarily commit, or we just kind of wait there. Whereas if we're playing to win, we're gonna body shot them and then aggressively try to finish off the kill. So, Again, he never used his throwing knife a single time. And I know he's told me that uh, he switched to Night Stalker since then, which is good. Um, you're basically going to use your uh, your smoke just like he did his grenades. A lot of his grenades were um, priming grenades, grenades or zoning grenades. And in the case of if you're going to play Gunslinger again, you're honestly better off using Trip Mine or even Swarm Grenade. Um, trip mine's still really good. It's gonna, it's not lethal, but it's still gonna keep you absolute if you, and block off zones uh, where they can't necessarily uh, push into you very easily. And it's really good as a sniper to have uh, something in your kit alongside your throwing knife that could deter people from rushing you, or at least slow them down. Like if you throw a a, a trip mine on a wall and it just immediately gets shot, that's you know two, three, four seconds that you have to reposition to back up to find a new angle. Um, and then to, to kill them as they round the corner. It's still a successful grenade even though it didn't do any damage. It gave you time to react and to come up with a new plan. Um, so I'm a little frustrated by how passive the gameplay was and um, always going to the 50-50. But um, we'll, we'll talk about why that isn't necessarily a very good thing. So let's bring up the new map. A little hard to see the call out, so I'll try to uh, circle them when I say them. So we see that because Alpha spawns out here on beach and Bravo spawns out here by jungle boat, really the 50-50 is gonna be over by B. That's the fastest way to go. Um, the other 50-50, which is a little bit slower, is if Bravo team goes to Sea Cave, which means Alpha team would go to River Door, or outside in River. So that gives you basically two sight lines for your 50-50s. That gives you B out, 
and it gives you a CK belt here. So, why do we go to 50-50s even though they're bad? Well, we know that because it's the, the shortest location for the enemy team, that someone's going to be there when we get there. The problem with going to B as a 50-50 is it's completely open. It's pretty easy to just lob grenades um, from this platform down into B. And you don't have great escape routes. Um, your escape route onto Ninja is covered if someone's on boat. And there's no cover. So Ninja's the worst place to try to escape to because there, you have no cover. You have to jump to get there so you have no great accuracy, especially if you're not using a hand cannon. And if you do get out there and you have to turn around, the same issues are still there. You're still no cover, gotta jump again, no shots. It's really dangerous. And again, same reason for trying to backpedal to B jump and to go into back rocks. You have to jump, there isn't great cover. Um, this is really your only good escape, and it can be cut off pretty easily if someone sweeps around through tunnel and goes this way. Because then, if the enemy team pinches you and back rocks, uh, you don't have great cover for either side, and you have to fight your way out in this really, really confined space here. So it's pretty dangerous for you to to escape B. So we notice that if you are gonna go to this particular 50-50, what's the strength of this 50-50? Um, really, it's just keeping people off of boat. Um, this sight line here, from B out to jungle, isn't great, just because there's no good head glitches for either player. Um, you can maybe snipe from behind this rock. That's about as good as it gets, as far as if you wanna change this 50-50 into something in your favor. If you're on B, uh, your best option, because most people know where the head, head is on B, you can all, go all the way back here, or here. But really the only reason you go actually go on to B is to control the snipers on B boat. And so if you control the snipers on B boat, that means movement through dark tunnel is possible for your teammates. Because then, where they're going to get shot from, the sight line here, is now jungle boat out onto the shelf, and jungle out onto the shelf. They're not getting shot at head-on anymore. Which means that they can hug the wall and alleviate some of the issues with uh, people out in jungle. Or they can uh, hug the wall and then jump across to support you. So that way people on jungle boat can't attack them. If we do control B, and we're Bravo team, that means that we have a really nice sight line all the way down on the beach into what is called on here bitch spot. I just call it shelf. I don't think you're a bitch for using a head glitch. Something you should be doing all the time anyway. Um, but you have a nice sight line here. Uh, others, I, think, I believe you can cover here. Uh, if you're on this side, you should be able to cover down the river door. So, you have some good sight lines for covering pushes into your team, um, if you're on Bravo. If you set up three snipers in this kind of formation, you basically cover every single push into you. So how do they really push into you, coming this way, without getting shot at first? You should pretty, you're pretty much guaranteed to get first shot off every single time if you set up in this position, which is why a lot of teams play super passive on this map. But it makes you very predictable and very easy to pick apart because if you send three people to one location, uh, you can't easily support the teammates because of how sp your teammates because of how spread out you are. If we send three people through Shrine, um, this door, this choke point here is gonna be the most dangerous spot for you. And as soon as you get through that door into the shrine room, your two uh, uh, avenues to get out can be exploited pretty easily, um, or even just looping back around. Because only one person at any given time is going to have a shot on the entire team. And if you just team fire with something like a Mida or a Hawksaw, um, or even get close enough to get within hand cannon range, you're not going to last very long staying out here on boats and playing really passively.
So I talk a lot about the problems with being passive, but there are a lot of advantages to being passive. Like I said, you get to cover every single angle if they decide to push into you. And so being passive is actually the best way to punish bad players who have really poor positioning. Uh, if you're in a game where, you know, by the midpoint you've kind of felt out your opponents and they tend to rush you a lot with either a hand cannon or a shoulder charge or a shotgun, um, any of those things, or even shade stepping around and they're constantly pushing into you, it's in your best interest to let them push into you, but not in such a way that they're going to get close enough to shotgun you in the first place. So in this way, if I'm constantly holding my sprint button, I'm always going to get a shot on someone moving into jungle. And that's good for me because jungle doesn't have a, a lot of cover to dip back into if I get a body shot. And if they do dip back into one of these locations, then I'm going to have another sight line ready to go to finish them off. So, but again, this only really works is if your teammate or if your opponents aren't very smart and they're just pushing in the, in the open and they aren't rotating around the map. Um, a better idea, like I suggested in the middle of the match, was actually um, basically working on a pivot point and moving back and forth on one half of the map to control the halfway, we'll call it the, the midcourt line. So if we control this line and we never really pass this point into their half of the map, we basically have a really good opportunity to cover all the same sight lines, but by rotating. And now you can basically do the team setup, but by yourself. And you can move up here. You can go into shrine, or you can go out by sea cave. This is the furthest you wanna go. Um, this is risky because they potentially spawn if you kill someone in CK, they can potentially spawn out on boat and ruin your rotation. But if you have teammates still out on boat, then this is a safe rotation up because they're not going to spawn on this half of the map. Maybe they'll spawn on B, maybe they'll spawn back rocks and be closer. But um, again, this is probably the furthest you want to go to push out during your rotation. Um, this door here, you would really only push out if you know they're outside dark tunnel. If you know they're here, you would push out through shrine door on the river side. Otherwise, just cover inside shrine. So just by doing that, making that little adjustment and starting to move around the map, you're still comfortable covering the same sight lines that you're used to, but now you're being more proactive about seeking out the enemy and cutting off the ways that you ha they have to attack you um, and still keeping yourself out of harm's way. If you take one shot, just like we saw in the beginning, he took one shot in dark and immediately rotated onto B. That's basically what you're going to be doing as you rotate around the map in a more assertive playstyle, which is going to, you're going to have a lot more success, Not maybe not necessarily your KD, but you're a better team player if you're locking down how the enemy moves, as opposed to waiting for the enemy to move into you. You're going to see more opportunities to get into firefights as well. And that's what you want. Um, you don't need to win every single fight. You're not going to win every single fight. Sometimes they're just going to outgun you. Sometimes you're just going to miss. Um, that happens. It still happens to me all the time. I get a little frustrated, but, you know, oh well. That's why we move a lot, so we get that repetition. So we get all those engagements all the time. Um, and it, keeps, it, it gives you a good foundation for... Um, moving back. It's hard to over push when you don't move past the midway point of the map. So it's it's really hard to punish someone that just rotates. You you your best option is really uh, team firing or cutting them off as they move. It's similar to a disruptor role where you flank um, except you don't go all the way behind them and because you're not going all the way behind them you have predictable spawns. So you kind of you kind of have a good feeling of where they're going to attack you from next. So they're really if they're only going to spawn out here on beach and rocks and A and A cave, then it gives you a lot of opportunities to move around the map safely. 
for example, that really opens up Dark Tunnel for you if they're spawning here. Because they can push around these corners into you and you could be on the other side sniping or just waiting for them with a shotgun. Um, I've played this map a couple of times on Elimination. I can't quite remember where the overtime point is. I want to say it's in River, but I can't remember for sure. But the same 50-50 principles uh, apply when it's still Elimination. Uh, you still have the same sight lines. You want to tend to avoid them. And uh, and use your head glitches, which is mostly boat, um, jungle boat, this shelf. Um, those are the only real great head glitches. Depending on your location, like the rock back here on Sea Cave and a couple of these rocks out here are okay. Um, coming onto this little shelf here by the explodey box, um, that actually gives you a good line on the B platform. So I had asked this question in a sweat the other day. Um, so people are struggling with the opening engagement uh, and how to, if you lose the opening engagement, especially in a sweat, it, it gets really easy to fall behind because of the pace and the, not, the map knowledge that people have and where you're gonna spawn and how you're gonna move. So if you're just starting off, let's say a non-elimination, so you can afford to make a few mistakes. Um, moving to the 50-50, if you want to dictate the pace of the match, moving to the 50-50 is gonna mean that you can be the most aggressive. You don't necessarily need to send everyone there. You can if you want to. Um, but if you send one person there as a scout, then it, you can get a lot of really good information. So if you send one person to Dark Tunnel and you don't see anyone firing on you from boat, that means you have a free flank through through, through platform and they've probably rotated to Sea Cave to begin, with, to begin the match. If you're the kind of team that likes playing passively or you have a lot of snipers on your team, if the enemy team moved to Sea Cave, that means you can set up on boats and be boat and be... And like we discussed earlier, you can cut off their opportunities to push into you. If you do notice that everyone is there, hopefully you don't die. Um, the, the point of the scout is kind of see and back off. So you might slide into view and then immediately backpedal with a burst, um, either focus burst or escape or shade step. And just relay that information to your team. You no longer need to challenge there. Um, the reason you scout here it's primarily because people are going to throw grenades at you. And it's my belief that to win the opening engagement, uh, you have to have the most abilities up and get the most effect out of them. Um, because in the very beginning, everyone has their grenade up, everyone has their melee up, everyone has special ammo. So if you lose your grenade right off the bat, you really hamper your ability to properly push into a team and to properly team fire. So let's say something as simple as a firebolt. If I'm here on B heavy and I lob my firebolt in the dark because I see you and I whiff it and I'm the only Sunsinger on the team, that means the enemy team can, if they want to, cuddle up pretty effectively and push me because I have no way to do uh, damage to all the teammate, team members. So if you miss and they all rotate through B ninja or even out on a B platform or pinch you from two sides, you don't have any great options for priming your target anymore. You're going to die, and that's going to snowball onto wherever your team decided to go. And from there, then you can start pushing the pace of the map. Um, the opening engagement is, in my opinion, the slowest point of the map that you should be playing um, on, out, outside of when you're behind and you need to slow down the pace of your uh, opponents. Maybe they're playing really, really aggressively and you just need to take a breather. Then you would slow down. But in the very beginning, because of how easy it is, not necessarily on this map, but on certain maps like Cauldron or Asylum, where the spawns are very close, um, it becomes very easy to push you off a spawn, which means that losing that opening engagement could potentially lose you the entire game.
if you're playing against good players. Uh, or on a longer map like Widow's Court, if they if they uh, do a setup around Gazebo and you only get to push through Beach and through Courtyard and they're just constantly picking off the snipers and they never need to move for the rest of the match, that's all set up by that initial engagement you have with the enemy team. So at no other point in the match, outside of in non-elimination modes, is your life more valuable than it is in the opening 30 seconds, 45 seconds of the match. So you really need to be mindful and and, uh, and be careful when you do have those opening engagements and don't waste any of your abilities. If you do use an ability to zone someone off and they're zoned off, you immediately need to move because you're no longer safe where you are. Um, so let's move on to one of the other maps. To show you guys. So these are some of the sight lines for sniping and also for primary play that are on this map. The red ones would be the what I would consider 50-50s. And the blue ones would be the ones I would consider uh, potentially going to in order to challenge um, non-traditional spots. All of these sight lines are really good. Um, all the blue ones I would consider non-50-50s just because of the angle at which you're at. Um, for example, this one on B boat that goes all the way out to A special, you're on a head glitch uh, on this sight line and they aren't. So you have a really, really good shot chance to get a free pick. Um, this corner here, you get to dip back into cover to cover pushes out into the river. Um, this shelf here on B is a nice head glitch that goes out either of these sides. Um, and this corner here, you can actually see all the way on the beach. So you can, you can get people off of spawn really easily if you go on to B and they're spawning a, a beach. These blue sight lines here are really good at, at, uh, for pushing pace as a sniper. Um, you notice that a lot of them end on, you know, shortly after where you would spawn on the other side of the map. Same thing over here. If you're over here, you can spawn or you can fire onto boats. So these are just some sniper lanes. And not to leave the shotgunners out in the dark, there's also a grouping of choke points. Um, the best place to shotgun on this map is always going to be dark, but it's also going to be the riskiest because you can never really go through it. Um, you can only pull people into it. But it's really close quarters. There's no real way to dip back into cover, and they're all choke points. So that's where you want to be shotgunning um, or pulling people into shotgun. Another great one is Shrine Room. You can live in the Shrine Room the entire map if you really wanted to. Um, just hopping up and down either on the actual shrine or around it. There's a lot of space here, a lot of good escape routes. Um, the biggest issue with going to Shrine is it is easy to, to pinch you in the back wall. But if you're getting three-man pinched into the back wall, um, your teammates are most likely out here and you're by yourself. Uh, probably off of your teammates dying. Uh, but again, you're probably going to get a kill. Killing, trying to fight your way out. So, it isn't it isn't awful. Even if you get three-man pinched in the inside. it's you, You're basically a, a cornered animal, and that's when you're going to be most dangerous anyway. Um, we can see most of the sight lines are basically the doors around A. There's the the entrance into heavy, river door here, um, this rock choke point. This is a choke point too. But these are more traffic lanes than or just moving through as opposed to actually fighting. You're more likely to fight out on beach or out here, um, out here in this area. And again, pull people in the in the dark, and you'll most likely kill them if you're a shotgunner. Uh, if you're going to control a zone on this map, like I said, don't go to, don't, you don't really want to go to B. Um, if you're on alpha side, so I didn't talk about alpha side very much, uh, really your rotation is C cave, out to A cave, um, out to beach, up through rocks. 
Um, it's difficult to push into Shrine from Alpha side, and it's difficult to push into Dark from Alpha side. Normally, Bravo side has complete control of the traffic through Dark. Um, so your midpoint of the map is basically here. It's a little bit, it's not quite as far as as the other side. You can see the other side has a lot more space. Because no one really fights in A. There's no real reason to push inside there. Um, if people are pushing you into A, it's because they're pushing you off spawn. And at that point, there's nothing you can really do about it anyway. Uh, if you want to play really slow and passive on this map, if you're alpha side, um, get a lead and stay on beach. There's a lot of cover with these boxes here. Um, there's actually a really nice spot that I use a lot on this rock right here. You can see down into door, and you basically can lock off any pushes inside really, really safely. Um, this is a spot that um, you should use a lot if you ever go A or if you're looking for angles, because you're completely covered. This this side comes like up, so you can't really get shot this way very easily. And even if you do, you can basically back down into cover. But this push through river door, any team's rotating this way, really nice to shut that off. Or if they super into you, you can just hop up here and pick them off real quick. Um, you can even, I mean, you have a good opportunity to jump from here onto shelf, um, go back into back rocks for an escape, or pull back into cave, or even hide in this corner. Like this, you have a lot of options from this spot. It's really versatile. So if you haven't used it or if you never used it before, definitely use it and try it out. Um, the reason with it, if you do want to play passive on alpha side, you go to beach is because, as we saw in the choke point maps, all the ways to push into you are from choke points or very unsafe lanes. And you still have a lot of space to maneuver in case you need to run. So basically, if you set up on shelf and you set up on this, this rock and you set up out on beach or even in this corner, any push into you is through a choke point and you can pretty easily shotgun someone. Um, you can cover sniper lines really nicely. Anyone trying to rotate through into A, you have a nice shot on them from beach. Okay. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, again, the, the gameplay was, was okay. As a passive player, it was, uh, it was okay. You, I, even passive players, uh, you, 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 you really highlighted that when you play passively, if the enemy team doesn't move into you, you're basically useless. Um, like he got a lot of kills, but it was mostly when he was moving, not necessarily when he was standing still. So if you just make that little adjustment where you can stay passive because that's obviously your play style and that's okay. Um, you don't have to, you don't need to turn into an aggressive player, but you should turn into an assertive player um, and be proactive about what you're doing. And as long as you keep in mind the that our acronym TAR, think act react. You just think about you know which spot are you going to go to, which spot are you going to rotate to, and then what does it mean when you get there. You know, where are you actually going to be attacked from? Where do you think the enemy is going to be? And how are you going to adjust accordingly in order to get those kills wherever they end up being?